Hi everyone, welcome to part 3. Welcome. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to this channel for more content. Uh, this is part 3 of uh, the Leadership Tribunal hearing discussion on dismissed Medeng Open MP Brian Kramer. We have reached the end. So if you haven't watched part 1 and part 2, check out my videos the channel watch them and then come to part three thank you all for watching and let's get on with this video and we have reached the final allegation faced by mr kramer if you all have stuck through with me throughout this whole video thank you all for watching so the final allegation that mr brian kramer was uh faced with was the misappropriation of 15 million kina of DSIP funds. This 15 million was used to purchase plant and equipment without following the you know normal procurement process, normal processes basically. So it was alleged that there were three documents that were not uh, annexed or attached to the payment vouchers. These three documents were namely the Procurement Committee decision, legal clearance from the Solicitor General and a contract. So the tri tribunal found that the payment of 15 million kina was made by the DDA to Madden Works and Equipment Limited uh, pursuant to a court order. The order was specific about the amount to be paid, the source of the funds and the recipient, and that it should be done in compliance with legislative procurement requirements basically well, just legal stuff so the tribunal did not make any findings on whether the court legislative requirements had been followed but found as there was no documentary evidence as to how the money was spent it was unable to conclude whether the money had ever been misappropriated or not the allegation was not proved to the required standard and the leader was found not guilty of misappropriating this 15 million okay so basically you know, the funds the, the 15 million was uh couldn't be proved it couldn't be proved that the money was misappropriated uh because uh there was no documentary evidence to show how the money was spent and the tribunal did not make any finding uh, regarding this so that's how he was basically found not guilty of misappropriating this of this charge let me know if you know of any other members of parliament in your uh, district or province if they have been accused of misappropriating funds let me know in the comment section so i can do more research and um, bring this issue to light how are your members in parliament doing are they doing well are they using money well let me know okay so in summary uh, brian kramer was facing 13 allegations of misconduct uh, one allegation was withdrawn because there was no evidence offered. Of the remaining 12 allegations, Kramer was found guilty on eight and not guilty on four. He's, well, he's now awaiting his sentence hearing, but as of recently, um, this week, he was found, sacked as a member of Medeng member. So yeah, his sentencing was that he has been now dismissed as um, member for Medeng Open. However, he says he's going to appeal the case. That's what I uh, read. So that's what happened. So uh, for his first allegation, allegation one, which was the scandalizing, uh, scandalizing the judiciary by posting articles on his Facebook account and insinuating a conflict of interest by the Honorable uh, Chief Justice of Papua New Guinea, Gibbs Salika, he was found guilty. Allegation 2 was scandalizing the judiciary by posting articles on his Facebook account accusing Peter O'Neill 
and his lawyers of filing a fake warrant arrest to deceive and mislead the court in 2019. He was found guilty on his second allegation. On his third allegation, allegation three, involvement and interference in police operational matters resulting in termination of Mr. Paul Nee, he was found not guilty. Allegation four, publicizing the complaint lodged against him by Honorable Sir Gibbs Salika, Chief Justice, posting it on Facebook account. Okay, this one, he was found uh, not guilty. Allegation five, allowing an associate company, Tolo Enterprise, to benefit through consultancy services uh, he, through the Medan District Development Authority. He was found guilty. Allegation six, misappropriation of 455,000 kina to the use of Tolo Enterprises by an associate, owned by an associate. He was found guilty. Allegation seven, use of Medan District Services Improvement Program funds in paying rentals for electoral, the electoral office company. Contrary to DSIP funds guidelines, he was found guilty. Allegation eight, misappropriation of 229,500 of the DSIP funds for rental of the ward project office, he was found guilty. And moving on, allegation nine, creating a structure within the Medang DTA without obtaining approval from Department of Personnel Management. For this, he was found guilty. Allegation 10, misapplication of Medang DSIP funds uh, for the salaries and wages of electoral staff in the Medang District Board Project Office, which were contrary to the uh, DSIP guidelines. He was found guilty. Allegation 11, uh, allowed for the appointment of Hitolo Carmichael Ahmed as the head of the secretary while being a me member of the board representing the community. He was found not guilty. And in allegation 12, uh, it was it was withdrawn. Allegation 13, for the misappropriation of the 15 million uh, of Medang DSIP funds through the Medang Works and Equipment Limited in funding plant and equipment without following procurement processes, he was found not guilty. So basically that's a summary. Uh, this video is basically just to inform you all about the court proceedings or what happened during uh, Brian Kramer's court proceedings and the outcomes of the judiciary team. So let me know, is Brian Kramer the only member of parliament who has his hands dirty and is he the only member of parliament who is guilty of misappropriating funds looking at the evidence presented against him uh, do you think that uh, people were fishing for evidence to dismiss him as meddling open member were they looking for ways to uh, put him under scrutiny or are all these charges are uh, real and true uh, are they unnecessary or did he really 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 break any laws does he really 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 need to be treated this harshly under the judiciary system or is there someone who has done something more dirty that is out there roaming free using up the SIP funds uh, siphoning them off into their own private businesses uh, do you think there are other members of parliament who are roaming around doing good things? Do you think there are also other dirty members out there? What about your member of parliament? Let me know. Uh, discuss all this in the comment section. Uh, drop some names so I can do more research and um, make more videos. And let's shed light on corrupt practices in the parliament house. Thank you. So yes, that's it for this issue, this topic about the Leadership Tribunal of Brian Kramer. Um, all in all, uh, what do you think? Uh, how did the hearing go? 
what are your thoughts do you have any ideas on how best uh, the ombudsman commission and the judiciary team could have carried out this um uh trial uh, was it fair and just do you think there are other members of parliament who should also be undergoing trials or leadership tribunals do you think brian kramer is worse than mr worst member of parliament out there or are there more members of parliament who need to be investigated let me know don't forget to subscribe be vigilant and take care